Before we go through some specifics, let's define a few things first. A parabola is a little more than the y equals x squared equations we know and love. A parabola is one of many different kinds of conics, themselves two-dimensional figures formed by the intersection of a plane and a right circular cone. These intersections can create circles, ellipses, hyperbolas, or parabolas. We can always define a parabola by the simple y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, but a parabola can be defined more specifically as a set of all points p in a plane equidistant from a fixed line, called the directrix, and a fixed point, called the focus, in the plane. If the parabola has a horizontal axis, it will be described by the standard equation y minus k squared equals 4p times x minus h. On the other hand, if the parabola has a vertical axis, the standard equation will be x minus h squared equals 4p times y minus k. The vertex is centered at the point hk. Note that p is the distance between the focus and the directrix, as shown here. Parabolas are almost everywhere you look. They can be found in McDonald's arches, the Golden Gate Bridge, in satellite dishes, solar cookers in the developing world, and even in the Death Star. Parabolas are seen in so many places because of how useful they are, particularly because of some of their special properties. One aspect of parabolas is that they are incredibly stable structures. The keystone can support incredible amounts of weight, allowing the construction of dome structures, support arches, and pieces of architecture such as the St. Louis Arch. Parabolas also have a perfect shape for focusing things like visible light, radio signals, and etc. Any ray parallel to the axis of symmetry is reflected to the focus of the parabola. Something as simple as a parabola is exactly what allows things like the giant Arecibo radio telescope to work allowing it to focus radio emissions from distant galaxies so that astronomers can study them. In addition, parabolas have another special property. In the 1600s, Galileo discovered that objects follow a parabolic trajectory. Other factors like air resistance still come into play, but Galileo's discovery means that you can predict the movement of any projectile, whether it may be a baseball or a rocket. Speaking about rockets, we're going to do a quick example to demonstrate how it all comes together using ro 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 rockets. Well, bottle rockets. Even though they're just bottle rockets, the core concepts remain the same. Given some important details, we can model the rocket's flight path with a parabola. We'll also use a little bit of physics, but don't worry, we'll go over that too. Yeah. Multiple launches and one crushed rocket later. We have a good idea of the distances and times involved. For each launch, the rocket was filled to 45 psi and the launch angle was set to 30 degrees. On average, the total flight time was roughly 4 seconds. Lastly, we'll use 200 feet as the total distance traveled. With this information and another equation, distance equals half acceleration times time squared, we can find the vertex of the parabola. Then we can plug in a point to solve for p. Since the axis of symmetry cuts the parabola in half into two 100-foot sections, we know that the x-coordinate of the vertex is 100. Finding the height is just a little more complicated. We know that half of the time that the rocket is in the air is spent falling back to the ground from the vertex, so using the equation distance equals half acceleration times time squared, with the acceleration being gravity, we can solve for the total distance that the rocket falls. Plugging in 2 for the time, and 32 feet per second squared for the acceleration gives us 64 feet as the distance, which is also the y-coordinate of the vertex. With that piece of information, we now know the vertex of our parabola, which gives us the equation x minus 100 squared equals 4p y minus 64. To solve for p, we'll plug in a point on the parabola to create an equation with a single variable. Plugging in the point 0, 0 gives us negative 100 squared equals 4p negative 64. Solving for p then gives negative 39. Quickly replacing p with negative 39 gives us our final parabola equation. x minus 100 squared equals negative 156 and a quarter y minus 64. Thanks for watching, and we hope you guys enjoyed it.